Welcome to The Spokesman Speaks, a podcast for farmers and ag professionals by the Iowa Farm Bureau, bringing you the news, experts, and educational insights that matter most. Now, here's your host. Welcome to our July 29th edition of The Spokesman Speaks podcast. I'm Andrew Wheeler, and today's episode features discussions on the evolution of Iowa's farms and the growing economic impact of agriculture in our state using data from the latest U.S. Census of Agriculture and a newly released study commissioned by the Coalition to Support Iowa's Farmers. Let's start with Brian Waddingham, who's executive director of the Coalition to Support Iowa's Farmers. Every five years, Brian's team releases a new study quantifying agriculture's contribution to Iowa's jobs and overall economy. Just last week, the coalition released the 2024 version of that economic study. To share the highlights, here's Brian with spokesman reporter Bob Bion. A new study commissioned by the Coalition to Support Iowa Farmers, CSIF, has been released that provides some very interesting data about agriculture's importance to Iowa's economy. It's a study that is conducted every five years. Before we get into the specifics of that study, how about we start with a little background about yourself, the Coalition, and its mission? Yeah, certainly. I've been the executive director here at the Coalition for nearly 14 years, and the Coalition's mission has been uh, the same since the day I started as it is now 14 years later. You know, we are here to help the livestock farmer grow their farm successfully and responsibly, and we've done that now for 20 years. This is a big year for us. Uh, 2024 marks 20 years of helping livestock farmers. And if you look back 20 years, the coalition was started for farmers by farmers to help address some of the concerns that were out there about the changing livestock production methods, the changing demographics that brought more people without farm backgrounds to the country. And then also farmers had some concerns about a growing list of rules and regulations that they were faced with. And so it really called for a a proactive approach to help address some of those concerns. So Iowa's Farm and Commodity Groups got together and the coalition to support Iowa's farmers was born. So let's get into the study specifically, what it is and why we conduct this study. It looks like it dates back, like you said, to 2009. Yeah, so this is our fourth study since 2009. It's always been based on the Census of Agriculture. The latest one was based on the 2022 Census of Ag. And we conduct this study because we believe that the numbers tell an incredible story about how much Iowa benefits from livestock production and agriculture in general. And we think it's important to share that information with everybody. So what data was analyzed to come up with the data points in the study? So the data that we took a look at all came from the 2022 Census of Ag and the in-plan modeling system. And we've used decision innovation solutions uh, out of Urbandale, Iowa to run all of these reports for us and calculate the economic impact that agriculture has on the state of Iowa. Looks like the overarching message from the study is that agriculture continues to be a main driver of Iowa's economy contributing 32% more to the state economy than just five years ago, and overall more than 22% of Iowa's total economic output. Yeah, no doubt agriculture drives Iowa. Uh, Agriculture contributed $159.5 billion to the state economy, which is 32% higher than it was in 2019. And another way to look at those numbers is that that means that one out of every $3 that enters Iowa's economy comes from agriculture here in Iowa. So what does the study tell us about Iowa's labor income as it relates to agriculture? Hey, you know, that's another bright spot of this study. There are more than 385,000 Iowans employed by agriculture. So another way to look at that is that one out of every five people today go to work because of agriculture here in our state. Does the study say anything about the number of Iowa farm families, who owns the farms, and maybe a farm's average size? And why is that information important? Yeah, that's another fact that comes out in this report. Iowa's home to 86,911 family farms, which is actually up from the 2017 Census of Agriculture, which is good news. It means we're growing. And that's not a trend that's being seen in a lot of other states that surround us. 
also just a little over 96% of the farms in Iowa are family owned and operated. And the average size of those farms is 345 acres. And I think it's important to mention here, there is this misperception out there that ag is big, but here in the state of Iowa, you know, we've got 96% of those farms being ran by families. And the size of those farms is actually down 10 acres from the 2017 census of ag. So again, kind of bucking some uh, national trends that we're seeing here in Iowa, uh, we're all about the family farm. And, and that's really who's continuing to drive agriculture here in our state. Well, let's turn to livestock and crops. What does the study tell us about livestock production in Iowa? Livestock and crop production continues to drive Iowa's economy, and Iowa farms definitely support a healthy and productive livestock industry. Based on that 2022 data, you know, we saw farmers here in Iowa raise 3.52 million head of cattle and calves, uh, 859,000 beef cows, 238,000 dairy cows, and nearly 24 million head of hogs and pigs. So livestock production continues to grow, continues to thrive, and I think looking forward, we're going to continue to see that optimism here in the state of Iowa for livestock and poultry production. How about crops and crop production in Iowa and how does that compare to livestock production? So yeah, in 2022, we produced 2.6 billion bushels of corn, more than 540 million bushels of soybeans. Crop production here in Iowa was worth 16.2 billion. And when you compare that to livestock, livestock production was worth 20.4 billion. Put those two together and we've got a real economic driver here in the state of Iowa with agriculture. So does the study tell us anything about what we can expect in the future with ag production in Iowa? Or can we make some assumptions about the next 10 or maybe 20 years based on the data? I think it's hard to make predictions about the future, but when we look at the numbers uh, since 2009, we have been on a very positive path uh, with more jobs, more economic uh, impact from agriculture. And keep in mind too that throughout the course of these studies, we've, we've persevered through floods, droughts, heat waves, COVID, low commodity prices, but yet that Iowa farmer continues to persevere and work through it. And, and I don't see that trend not continuing just because of the caliber of, of the men and women we have here in the state of Iowa raising crops and livestock for us. Well, kudos to CSIF for commissioning this study. Like you said, it was conducted by Iowa-based Decision Innovation Solutions. It's another important piece of everything that CSIF provides for Iowa farm families. Kind of on that note, and you mentioned this, it's the 20th anniversary of the coalition. Anything you can share with us about your upcoming 20th anniversary celebration and plans for the future? I think there's going to be something at the Iowa State Fair, correct? Yeah, that is correct. We're hosting a 20th anniversary reception on Wednesday, August 14th, and that'll be at the Alliant Energy Landing on the Iowa State Fairgrounds and runs from 9 to 11 a.m. We've got our Secretary of Agriculture here in Iowa, Mike Neg, lined up to speak, as well as some other farm and commodity group leaders, including Marty Schwager with the Iowa Farm Bureau Federation. And we've invited past Good Farm Neighbor Award winners, farmers that we've assisted, industry representatives, as well as elected officials. So just kind of our way of saying thank you to everyone that's helped make the coalition so successful over the past 20 years, as well as really focusing in on, on the livestock producers uh, that call us for assistance to make sure they're doing everything that they can be doing right on their farms and uh, when it's time to add livestock or bring that son or daughter back they want to make sure they're doing everything responsibly and successfully so the coalition just thanks them for their support over the last 20 years as well so everybody is invited to come by have some cookies some cake and hear some really great success stories about the coalition one in five iowa jobs one third of the state's total economic output agriculture's impact on our state is truly amazing, and it's great to have some new research to help tell that story. It's a big undertaking to quantify agriculture's economic contribution to our state, so we appreciate Brian Waddingham and the coalition taking on that important project. If you'd like to learn more from the coalition's 2024 Economic Contribution Study, including lots of county-specific economic data, we've included a link to that full study down in the notes for this episode. You'll also see a link to the 20th anniversary celebration that Brian mentioned. 
As we just heard, livestock is absolutely crucial to our state, and the Coalition to Support Iowa's Farmers has played an important role in strengthening livestock farms over the past 20 years. So if you plan to be out at the Iowa State Fair on August 14th, click that RSVP link down in the notes for this episode and sign up to join the celebration. As Brian said, the most recent U.S. Census of Agriculture provides much of the key data that the coalition uses to quantify ag's economic impact in Iowa. Of course, the Census of Ag includes lots of other interesting information as well, information that helps us understand how agriculture is evolving in our state, all the way down to the county level. For more on that, here's spokesman editor Tom Block with Iowa Farm Bureau economist Dr. Christopher Pudens. Christopher, thanks for joining the podcast again. We're going to talk about the U.S. Census of Agriculture. For starters, can you describe the scope of the Ag Census and why it's an important tool for farmers and policymakers? The USDA Census of Ag is a regular national benchmarking of what's going on in the U.S. Ag industry. And it has a really long history, dating all the way back to 1840. And the U.S. Department of Commerce was responsible until USDA took over in 1997. Since then, USDA NAS has been in charge of this thing. It's taken every five years. And the data collection for the 2022 Census of Ag began at the end of 2022 and went into 2023. But as you can imagine, it takes a while for NAS to collect all that data, clean that data, put it in these tables that go online for public consumption. So results for the most recent Ag Census were first released this past spring, so spring of 2024, but they'll continue to slowly release various reports over time where they do a deep dive into you know, one aspect or another. Uh, one that they more recently released was the Census of Ag according to Congressional District. So there's a little bit of competition among the members of Congress you know, when that comes out. I think it was the Northwest Iowa Congressional District number four actually ranked number two nationally for total value of ag products produced. So a little bit of bragging rights there for those folks up that direction. A couple of additional things worth noting about the ag census. First, it is the gold standard, not just nationally, but internationally for agricultural data. It's very comprehensive, covering all farms and ranches with more than $1,000 of produce that is produced and sold or normally would have been sold in the year that the census was taken, so in 2022. USDA touts that the 2022 census contains more than 6 million data points about American agriculture. So like I said, very comprehensive. Most other countries don't have this kind of data, and if they do, they certainly don't have it dating back decades and decades and decades, all the way back to 1840 in some way, shape, or form. Because Ag Census data has such a long history like this, Ag Census is most appropriately considered in context. It is a very comprehensive survey that collects data for a slice in time, but it is useful to compare what that data looks like over time to get a picture of what trends are going on in the U.S. agricultural industry, where have we been, and where could we be going. It is also very good at making contextual comparisons within the data set itself. For example, it's very useful for state-to-state comparisons. It's very useful for congressional district comparisons, like I mentioned. What's going on in the 4th Congressional District in the state of Iowa versus what's going on in the 2nd Congressional District in the state of Iowa. Finally, the data is helpful for making comparisons with other data sources. Say, corn production acres in 2022 is described by the survey data in the Ag Census versus corn production acres in 2022 as estimated by USDA satellite data. So, like I said, overall, the Ag Census is the gold standard for data and is very helpful in context of all those other things. Yeah, it's just a massive document. As you said, you've had a couple of months to chew through it and analyze some of the data, and that will be ongoing, I'm sure. But at the top line level, what did the census show in terms of how the total number of farms and farmers in Iowa has changed over the past few decades? 
So the total number of farms and ranches in Iowa was actually up slightly from the 2017 census to the 2022 census, increasing from 86,911 total farms estimated. And this was an increase from 86,104 farms. Notably, this bucked the national trend, which nationally we saw an overall decrease in more than 140,000 farms. So this was one of the headline results that you saw all over the place was there are fewer farms nationally you know, in 2022 than there were in 2017. Well, in Iowa, that wasn't the case. We gained farms during that time period. This is likely reflective of what was a great pair of farm income years in 2021 and 2022, especially for folks who raise row crop commodities, and we raise a lot of row crop commodities here in this state. Another result that somewhat bucked national trends was that the average farmer age in Iowa increased only very slightly from 57.4 years on average to 57.6 years on average. And once again, this is a slightly more optimistic story than the national one, which showed that average farmer age was 58.1 years or up 0.6 years from 2017 to 2022. So two of those sort of headline national results uh, didn't actually hold true for the state of Iowa. Well, that's very interesting that things are a little more positive here in Iowa than perhaps some of the other major agricultural states. What other trends in Iowa can you compare to things that happened in other major agricultural states? And what unique factors influence Iowa agriculture compared to those other regions? One really interesting trend that emerged from the 2022 Ag Census had to do with the evolution of farm size here in the state of Iowa. And sort of the takeaway is that farm size really hasn't changed that much, at least on average, here in this state. Since 1997, the average farm size in the state of Iowa has only increased by 10 acres per farm. Back in 1997, it was 335 acres per farm. Here in 2022, it's only 10 acres per farm, more than that, at 345 acres per farm. And this is actually a little bit of a decrease from 2017, which saw that we had 355 acres on average. So peeking underneath the hood of that, there is a little more detail there that needs to be discussed. In general, very broadly speaking, there has been a reduction in the number of quote unquote medium sized farms, and there has been an emergence of these smaller farms and in the slightly larger farms. So, to just look at the average size and leave it at that, it isn't quite the whole story, but still, it is a very interesting result that since 1997, average farm size in Iowa really hasn't changed. And this is especially interesting when you consider uh, our neighboring states. Basically, every state that has touched Iowa has seen farm size increase from 2017 to 2022. Only one state, and that was Illinois, saw farm size decrease like Iowa did from 2017 to 2022. All of those other states saw farm size increase in that time period. Some other comments on our neighboring states. All of our neighboring states were down at least 1,500 farms per state. Some states were down substantially more than that. You know, I had said a little bit earlier that the total number of farms in Iowa actually increased from 2017 to 2022. That is not the case for any of our neighbors. So Iowa really has a, an agricultural industry that's robust, it's strong, we're keeping folks on our farms, and those farms aren't really changing in size that much on average. Well, that's very interesting. It kind of bucks some of the headlines that you see in the popular media about farms are only getting bigger. And of course, we know there's economic reasons for that. It, with inflation and everything, some farms have to get bigger to economically survive on that farm income. But one of the other interesting trends that we saw in this census was direct to consumer sales in local food markets here in Iowa. Tell us what you found from the survey in those regards. I personally was really excited to see the results for the uh, direct-to-consumer sales and local food markets part of the Ag Census with all of the discussions surrounding those subjects in 2020. 
I have to say I was a bit surprised when I first looked at the results because the number of farms in Iowa using direct-to-consumer marketing actually decreased slightly from 2017 to 2022. It was something like 2,575 farms in 2017, and then there in 2022, the Ag Census showed that it was 2,427 farms. So a slight decrease from census to census. If you just peek a little bit below the surface though, you see that things looked a little different for the direct to retail marketing aspect, which that was also reported on by the Ag Census. And you see that the number of farms involved in direct to retail marketing increased from 558 to 957. And you know, that's a, a few hundred additional farms that are participating in that practice. But that's not even close to the whole story because the value of the sales that this group of farms had increased more than eight times from under $16 million a year of direct to retail marketing sales to more than $127 million a year of direct to retail marketing sales. That's a huge increase. And as I thought about it, it made a lot of sense to me. You know, when you walk into a grocery store these days, especially if it's a local or a regional grocery store, you see local food everywhere. You know, you see local sausage in the coolers, you see local maple syrup in the aisles, you see locally roasted coffee, you see local microbrews, you see local food products everywhere. And I suspect that this will only continue to increase as consumer demand for that type of product, that locally sourced product continues to increase. That is one of the major changes we saw during the COVID era was that demand for local food. And you're absolutely right. I can't go into whether it's my local grocery store in a small town or it's one of the bigger chains. There's always a local farm sign. And that's what really seems to attract the consumer's attention. And these days it even goes beyond your grocery store. It goes to your C stores, right? You go to a C store. It might be a local chain. It might be a big national chain. And there is your local food product sitting there on the shelf or sitting there in the cooler ready for folks to buy. As we've talked about here, the census has a wealth of information at the state level, but even beyond the state level, it really drills down into county level economic data. What are the, some of the key points that you've seen there? The county level data is really interesting and makes for some pretty cool maps, which I think is reflective of what I consider to be the most helpful use of the county level data, which is to compare the county level data within a particular census with itself. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, if you look at the state of Iowa, you can see that Sioux County is a livestock production powerhouse. They are number one for cattle on feed, they are number one for dairy cows, and they're barely edged out by Washington County to be number two for hog inventories. And then, you know, just to put the icing on the cake, they're number one for sheep. So Sioux County, you see by looking at this county level data that Sioux County just is this livestock production powerhouse. What else do you see in the county level data? Well, you see that Ringgold County down in Southern Iowa is number one for hay production and number two for beef cow inventories. So that's a kind of an interesting result that you know rings true with what people might think about Ringgold County. For poultry, you see that Hamilton, Buena Vista, Sac, Cherokee counties really light up the county data when it comes to turkeys. You also see a bunch of layers show up in Wright County, which is kind of what you would expect given the layer production up there. And then finally, you saw that a bunch of broilers show up on the western border of the state of Iowa from the 2017 census to the 2022 census, especially in Harrison County. And these are producers who are supplying for Lincoln premium poultry across the border. So you see these really cool county to county comparisons especially if you view it in map form, very insightful to examine it in that sort of way. Well, we'll look for some of those cool maps as you're on the speaking circuit this winter throughout the state. Beyond demographics and income and other information like that, what else does the Ag Census tell us about trends in other areas, such as adoption of new technologies, precision farming, biotechnology, conservation, things like that? Yeah, the Census of Ag does include a suite of questions regarding land use practices, including conservation practices like you referenced. 
They ask about you know conservation or reduced tillage. They ask about cover crop acres, things like that. So there are those robust questions about conservation practices. There's also some other interesting things in there that are really telling about technology adoption on farms. For example, the 2022 Ag Census told us that nearly 80% of Iowa farms report internet access. They also have data in there about uh, how farmers use that internet in order to inform their daily decision making. In terms of precision agriculture, 2022 was the first census that they included questions about precision agriculture. And this data showed that 32% of farms had some sort of precision agriculture in use on their farm. This ranged from GPS guidance to soil mapping to use of drones to robotic milking. So a pretty expansive definition of precision agriculture was used by this Ag Census. But it'll be interesting to see how that one evolves over time, whether or not that increases. I, I suspect that it will in the 2027 Ag Census. Christopher, while I have you here, I can't not ask you about some of the other current economic conditions going on in the state. So as we wrap up, I wanted to touch on the Iowa Farm Bureau Economic Summit that was held in June, especially with those economic stresses that were present at the time and continue to weigh on farmers' bottom lines even as we speak. What were your thoughts and key takeaways from the Economic Summit? Thanks for asking about the Econ Summit, Tom. I thought it was a great event top to bottom. Got some great reviews back about it. Make sure to be on the lookout for information for future Econ Summits. There, there will be more, that's the plan. In terms of uh, thoughts and key takeaways, I think I'm gonna discuss three here. And the first was that at a very high level, Frank Kelly of Fulcrum Macro absolutely hit the nail on the head with the title of his talk. And his talk was called, Everything Everywhere is Changing All at Once. And I think this really is a big takeaway from the event because things change so quickly in today's world. And because we have uh, access to so much information, we can see how all those things are changing so quickly all at once. And I think that even more so than other industries in agriculture, something that's happening in China or something that's happening in India or something that's happening in South America has direct impacts for a farmer's bottom line those international events very much translate back to the farm gate. And so I think that is an overarching statement about the economic climate right now. I think that is it, that everything everywhere is changing all at once. Another key takeaway came from Jim Canute, who presented as part of the Ag Lending and Real Estate panel. And he had a slide that said, interest rates are back to normal. Now, folks at home might not feel like that's the case, but using data going back to 1960, he did make a fairly strong case that interest rates today are, at least in the long-term high-level view, more or less normal. And obviously, there will be several interest rate cuts here at some point going forward, but he was trying to communicate to folks that people shouldn't have false hope about getting back to near zero interest rates like we've seen in the past decade that something closer to what we're experiencing today is more likely going forward. It's a tough pill to swallow, but I do think that that idea that interest rates are back to normal is something to keep in mind as folks make decisions on their farms. Finally, we were honored to be joined by Austin Goolsby, who is the president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. And Austin sat down for a wonderful fireside chat with Iowa Farm Bureau President Brent Johnson, they talked at length about the economy as a whole and what interest rates might do going forward before zooming into what's going on here in the 7th Federal Reserve District, which includes the state of Iowa. I think a key takeaway from that conversation was that the Federal Reserve, or at least Austin, seems to understand that things are challenging in the agricultural industry and things are challenging in manufacturing industry. The Fed seems to have a finger on that pulse, and that is informing their decision making. So if you're listening out there and you know things are tough and high interest rates are part of that, the folks who are making those decisions, they know that things are tough in part because of high interest rates. So I think that was a key takeaway that the Federal Reserve is aware of what's going on out here in farm country. At the same time, Austin did talk a lot about the resiliency of agriculture. You know, farmers are some of the toughest people out there. 
And a point that he made is that they'll figure out how to make things work, how to make the most of every opportunity going forward, just like they have in the past. And he's absolutely right about that. The farm community is fantastically resilient. So it, it was good to hold both those things at the same time, right? Things are challenging and he seems to understand that. Also, farmers are very, very good at making the most of every opportunity that comes their way. So to be on the lookout for opportunity and to take advantage of those opportunities when you have them. I would do want to note that the recordings for all three of these talks that I referenced, Frank Kelly of Fulcrum Macro, the Ag Lending Real Estate Panel, and the Fireside Chat with Austin Goolsby are all available online on the Iowa Farm Bureau website, available exclusively for Iowa Farm Bureau members. That's a terrific resource, so members can go ahead and log into their account on our website and have that content that they're not going to get anywhere else. And I'm sure as we go into harvest this fall, these economic conditions look like they're going to be around for a while. Talk a little bit about some other information that the website offers that people can find. I know you pump out content quite often that will continue to assess the situations. Iowa Farm Bureau members can sign up for regular emails about economic conditions, WASD reports, crop condition reports, reports related to the livestock industry, things like that. So if you aren't signed up for those things and would like to receive that information, make sure to get signed up for those email resources. My colleague, Zach Brummer, also maintains a basis tool where farmers can go online and they can you know, check the uh, prices at various elevators or other buyers of grain you know, according to distance or zip code. And so that's another great resource that's available on our website. Uh, and then finally, Tom, can't go without mentioning the spokesman. Every week, week in and week out, the spokesman has fantastic resources of all types, but even those that relate to economics that are available for our members. There's a wealth of new ag information at our fingertips, and we appreciate Christopher coming back on the podcast to dive into some of that new data. Near the end of that interview, Christopher mentioned a few resources for those of you who'd like to learn more. We've included links to all of those resources down in the notes for this episode, including the Economic Summit recordings, Iowa Farm Bureau's cash bid search tool, and ways for members to stay on top of the latest ag news from Farm Bureau through the spokesman and email news updates. We also included a link for you to learn more about Iowa Farm Bureau's activities for fairgoers at the 2024 Iowa State Fair. As usual, we'll offer plenty for fairgoers at Farm Bureau Park, including a chance for Farm Bureau members to win $5,000 in food and fuel, a chance for all fairgoers to win $500 in groceries, free daily health screenings, even pull tabs that give you a chance to win a free pork chop on a stick, a hamburger, a turkey leg, or even an ice cream cone at the fair. We hope you'll join us, and we'll see you there. That's all for this edition of the Spokesman Speaks podcast. We hope you learned a few new things about Iowa agriculture and that you'll join us for the next episode on August 12th. Thank you for doing the work that inspires everything we do here at the Iowa Farm Bureau, and thanks for listening to the Spokesman Speaks. Thank you for listening to the Spokesman Speaks, a podcast by Iowa Farm Bureau. Check out more podcast episodes at iowafarmbureau.com slash podcast. You can also find and subscribe to the Spokesman Speaks podcast in the Apple Podcasts app, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and other popular podcast apps. We appreciate your ratings and reviews, and we welcome you to email us your feedback at podcast at ifbf.org. 